thank you for taking time. We know it's a challenging time, but you've taken your time to come to talk to us. And we don't take it lightly. And the reason we wanted to talk to you this afternoon is that we wanted you to, to hear your voice because your voice matters and you say your story matters. It's, there shouldn't be many sides of this story. The, your story is that story. So I would like to know how have the last few months been for you? Uh, I've actually had eight terrible months of suffering. And I thought after the court ruling, I'm going to have to go home and live peacefully. It has even become worse in the past few few weeks since the judgment. Uh, it has not been easy. The torture and the fear and the threat is so real. And you know, nobody feels it. And uh, to my surprise, even after the, the sentence, um, people lash out and send all these messages. Some people have sent me a messenger, some people have sent me SMSs. But people have called me from all over the world. Uh, my friends, actually, for them, they decided to withdraw. And uh, women, the women I thought would actually be with me, actually didn't even give it, not even a call. So the past few days, I've kind of lived in isolation. But I am also very strong because um, uh, it is not the first time I'm having this kind of media assaults. I experienced a bit of this kind of thing um, during my campaigns because of the framing, the media framing of women, and especially if you're younger and, and you're single and all these things. Uh, but I am, I am I'm already emerging out stronger because, I, because of your support. At first, I did not go to any group. I talked to my people, I wanted the people of Kavarore to understand it. And I think now they do because I've seen big people, uh, Professor Edward Ibumayo, I've seen uh, the Honorable Beatrice Kiraso. I've seen many people. I do not take that support for granted. I've seen very uh, clear minded people coming out, and you're part of that team, the clear minded Ugandans, and other people from uh, outside, uh, from outside Uganda who have come out to support me. I do not take that for granted, and that is why I grow stronger, and I think I will emerge uh, out of this strong. Thank you so much. I wanted to know who is. MP Fabia, because because of this, you see, people have distorted who you are, and it's important that you gonna know who you are away from, you know, this is not the image of you. You are yourself. You have an identity yes. that we must know. Um, Sylvia Rabogo is a journalist. I'm trained as a journalist, but also as a social worker. I hold a degree in a social and community development from Mount Isabel University. I have worked as a journalist, a broadcast journalist all my life at uh, Voice of Toro, at uh, Hits FM, and Better FM all in Kawarole. I worked as a um, district councillor for the youth in 2006, then directly elected councillor for East Division of Porto Municipality. I was a speaker for the district council, district deputy speaker, and I was secretary general for Uganda District Council Speakers Association until I came to parliament. And now I am the member of parliament representing Kawarole district as a woman. And, and, and I am a mother. Yes, that's I what I was going to ask. Because we have seen a lot away from your professional yes. life. We have seen attacks that are so personalized, that are so yes. private, mm -hmm. that try to erase your humanity. Yes. So it's important that you talk about that um, in terms of uh, your family. Yes. And, you know. I, I am a mother of three, two girls and a boy. And I know people who just try to become experts and they say five hours i think they are about to say 20 or something but uh this is how people come out and try to uh to fight women in a way or to make you feel less confident uh when something comes up about a woman that is what society tries to do some of them are cultural sentiments some of them are tribal mm -hmm. sentiments uh that one i i know that there are people who are not objective in their thinking and they also do not try to analyze the situation and hear all the sides of the story before they come out and lash out. And this is what we've seen on social media. For people who do not have all the facts, but they're coming out to blame and throw a stone here and there. But I have to endure that. Actually, that is not as harsh mm -hmm. as what I endured in the last eight months of the harassment mm -hmm. of this boy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But what scared me when I started, actually, the fear became intense mm -hmm. at the time when this boy said, I want to protect you. I see your life is in trouble. You're in danger. I want to be the one to protect you. I'm like, what 
trouble does he perceive or does he know that I'm likely to be in and he wants to protect me and I thought he's going to use this lure to uh, appear like he's going to protect me and yet on the other side he's going to harm me so I also now started knowing that this person would harm me but would use this lure so I blocked his, his I blocked his calls he hid his number and continued calling the persistent calls in the middle of the night persistent calls when I'm in meetings actually it came to a time when I suspected that maybe he was in the neighborhood since I didn't know him and I'd never met him I'm like maybe he's in the neighborhood because maybe your neighbors know that the person who stays at that house is a member of parliament and of course I was suspecting how he could have got my number is it where I send and receive mobile money from or something like that so I was suspicious even within the, the, the community where I am I, I am living and I thought maybe this person would walk to me and, and in a supermarket and would harm me either stab me or something so I was so scared but it's not only that um, this boy said in one of the messages which I still have which I even tendered in court as evidence he said um, I love you nothing is going to stop me nobody will stop me not even you that confidence is very unusual the 25 year old talking to a woman of um, uh, my age and a woman of uh, being a member of parliament because people do not just every day many people say you know we cannot just walk to a member of parliament although i am approachable this is a person who is not from my community if it is a person from my community it is also different because you know this person meets you at church and gets used to you or meets you at um, uh, uh, maybe you've been interacting with parties or something like that or maybe from the same village there you look at it differently or maybe your fear is kind of minimized but also what made it worse uh, the time when he intensified his calls day and night always promising to protect me uh, is the time when women were being kidnapped and killed in this country and I am very sure that there are women at least I even tried to find out there are women who have been lured in the same way there is a girl who was lured to Chevando and was killed in a similar way. Someone took someone took her to a lodge, and I'm like, does this boy want to either frame me, took me, take me somewhere, and uh, harm me from there? Does he want to frame me, take you, take pictures of you, and then spread them all over, or ask you for money in in return, uh, in exchange for the pictures? These things have been done. So all my fear is coming from that problem. But I also do not rule out that this boy could have other people using him because it is so unusual that someone presses you so hard. Even when you tell him, I even went to the extent of asking him, Brian, I am uh, an old woman, I'm 42, and you told me you're just 25. Can I send you money and you date girls your age? The boy said, it is you I want. So if you're a woman in my position, with this background I'm telling you about, and someone comes to you like that, continuously even when you block him he hides his number mm. and continues sending messages i even lied to him i told him you know brian i'm here with my husband because he would call even in the night mm. i said can i give him to, uh, to you to talk to him that is mm. not your husband i am the one to mm. take care of you imagine the challenges yeah. a woman has to go through to protect exactly. her that i even have to lie that i have yeah. a husband mm. actually I, I one time thought i could ask someone to, to talk to him yes. and pretend he's my husband and it's not only you we have been harassed and you just have to find a friend yeah, a male friend so can you talk to this man for me and, and it's unfortunate and yes. people tend to think that you can separate just because a woman is in parliament that you can separate the experience from the generally what other women are experiencing mm -hmm. the reality is that that harassment does not usually stop is that mm -hmm. it, it, it really uh, goes back on what is happening in the community mm -hmm. and which takes me to the kind of reaction after that court ruling mm -hmm. people thinking you were the devil right yeah exactly do you know why because people think if you're a member of parliament you're not vulnerable to any situation it is not true we also live normal lives we also uh, fear and imagine around the same time actually a big girl was killed in broad daylight and you know there are no clues i think there are no clues yet so i am like this should be the same but that time i had already reported and when a big girl was killed he called me and said hey baby i want to protect you i have seen now what what is this this is what i've been telling you i am fearing for you mm. god i hadn't gone home yet i was driving from massacre road i had gone to meet a friend there I'm like oh my what am I going to do? Should I go home? Should I go to a hotel and stay in a hotel? Maybe he's waiting for me outside the gate. Every time I would call from far for the gate to be open. Mm -hmm. I even went to my friend's 
to help me get private security. I got private security to go with me. I even locked doors during the day, broad daylight, fearing you could walk in and stab you. I've seen people, young people who are obsessed. And of course, look at the other side. An obsessed person can kill. A person may not even be connected to any other person using him. These are all suspicions and all fears of a person who comes with a lot of force. Yeah. Uh, not just the love messages like mm. people are, are, are taking trying it and trying. Yeah. Yes, exactly. And, and what is, uh, for me, what was quite disturbing was the court sat, it listened to you, and uh, the magistrate. Usually magistrate's courts, we don't get very bold, you know, send, send convictions that actually send a, a, a bold message. And, and if they do, we don't get it in the media. Mm -hmm. But of course, this media attention came to you because you were, uh, because of the position. Mm -hmm. But even when the court did you justice, even, you know, it can't take back the psychological torture, yes. but trying to stop that torture, mm -hmm. we saw the media framing this as love message, even when the court said cyber harassment. Yes. Yeah. Uh, as a person from a media background, how how did this play out? Like, who is that at the center? Of this? Uh, I think we still have a long way to go to regulate social media and also the mainstream. Media. When we are reporting, you need to get the whole story. Whoever reported for the monitor from from courts is not a person who came to me. I was there. I was the person. In court. This person should have got my account. I am trained as a journalist, remember. Should have got my own account of how I feel. What is it that made this woman cry? So that that side of it comes out. So that people will see the other side of the story. But if you just come out and say, someone cried, people do not believe. I can't even go to that extent of fearing and crying. That is why they made fun out of... Uh, uh, crying in court. And all that. But imagine, you are interfacing with someone who has harassed you and, and and threatened you for eight months, eight whole months. But it's I was not, very when patient. you say you, it's not just you, but and you was busy smiling mm. through my fear. Mm. You know? So for me, that was beyond, and that is not something that I would expect from a young man who is studying, mm. because I expect a hopeful person mm. who looks beyond just looking at a woman and looking at the woman's looks, whatever it is, whether he's looking at. A, any other thing, uh, I think people need to understand this side of the story. Mm -hmm. I have had many people coming out positively supporting me, most especially from outside Uganda. Mm -hmm. yeah, but I'm also very grateful to the women who have come out, especially on Twitter, who have been supporting me. But they are also very important men in this country who have come out and they are very objective about this. They judged fairly, the, the, the court of the people judged fairly with some people coming up very positively. I don't take this for granted. These are the people that are going to fight for our daughters tomorrow because this could happen to your mother. Because I am also a mother. It could happen to your mother. It could happen to your daughter. It could happen to your wife, to your sister, to you know to your girlfriend. So if we need to um, we need to look at things objectively and try to judge fairly, not just to say because this person is a member of parliament, you know, because this boy is a poor boy, all of a sudden the boy is made poor so that people can sympathize with him. It is not about poverty. If he knew he's a poor boy, poor people are, are, are you know, we are always told by our parents, you're a poor girl, behave yourself. You're a poor girl, don't do that. Don't join that group. Be focused. So if this boy was a focused person, he's trying to he look, yeah. abuse poor people that poor exactly. people do anything. Exactly. Poor people do not do anything. Mm -hmm. Because I have come from uh, very humble be uh, beginnings, mm -hmm. I don't think I have been that desperate mm -hmm. to do that. And if actually, I've also been a very principled person, despite uh, hiccups here and there. Mm -hmm. I've been strong. And even in this very one, I am very strong. Because yeah. I know by the end of the day, people will understand it. And even if mm -hmm. I have been used as a sacrificial lamb in this by the, by, the, by, by the public, I've been used as a sacrificial lamb, I know that tomorrow will be better for our daughters and for the women. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The choices you talked about when you, this, you are dealing with this, feeling the choice to go public with it because the case would expose the details and you were talking about that struggle, thinking about the media and but finally making that choice that I will make this known because I can't die inside. That is why I, it lasted longer. But this boy's harassment was intense from the beginning. 
I knew it from the beginning that it was it was not the normal uh, messages or the normal approach men talk to women. So from there I already knew. But that is why it took long even to take it to police because I knew now. Do I go to a police station in my neighborhood and report there? Do I go to the central police station and report there? But I knew the media was going to blow it up. So I was within myself, I was having, uh, contemplating whether I should uh, take it on or not. But the threat was more than the, the fear for the media. I don't care the judgments that I've got for as long as I am safe and protected. That is why I ran to the courts of law. That's why I ran to police to protect me. I am not a person who wants the pomp of you not know, having guards here and there, uh, but I had to have the guards anyway because I was already threatened. So I kept quiet for it too long, the whole eight months until the time this boy was sentenced. And so when I see this public outrage over people who do not judge it fairly, I think we still have a long way in Uganda to fight harassment and violence against women. I think they are either violent because I am a woman, because there are people who say, ah, People talk to us, and we know we don't say it. I said, in my 42 years, I've never seen someone who harasses me like this. If actually they were there, I would have reported them already. Men approach me, they talk to me. It is very normal. We live with it, and actually, we enjoy it, mm -hmm. as women we do. But when it goes beyond to be an obsession, be a, a person can kill you. They must, yeah, they must be a person, An obsessed person can, can kill you, can kill your partner, can kill a, a member of your family. So I am satisfied with what came from court because the moment they keep him away for some time, even if there is public outrage, maybe I'll be safer. Maybe another woman will be protected from this same um, harassment. It's very important to talk about it, uh, the mental health, mm -hmm. because many people, just like they were playing all these cards about the guy being a boy and, and being poor, I mean, a lot of people are playing mental health that he needs to be helped. But it's trivializing the mental health of a person who has sustained harassment for over seven months. And, and it's important to come out that women being expected to carry a load without thinking about their psychological uh, torture and, and, and impact. That is why uh, older women will suffer more diabetes, will suffer more pressure and uh, stress and uh, depression uh, than men. Because men go out and speak to, to, to fellow men. But women are confined because you're supposed to say secrets of the home. It is at home. Like this one, people do not expect me to come out and say anything about it. They expect me to be strong and to handle. But deep inside me, I'm breaking apart. I'm falling apart. Uh, today, I really want to appreciate when I came out to this group of women. It's the first time I'm stepping out and feeling cushioned in the last eight months. I wasn't even safe within parliament because I didn't know whether it is a person who works at parliament, maybe. Mm -hmm. I was I was always scared, mm -hmm. even on the road. Mm -hmm. So people think you can handle this. Mm -hmm. I have tried my best. I am still trying to even appear because I'm a leader. You know, the people want you to uh, show like you're very strong. Mm -hmm. But deep inside me, the fear still lives and it still continues. I do know, I appreciate uh, women who have gone through violence and harassment that they really need rehabilitation more than you know the people who want to look at um, someone a, a convict and then they sympathize with the convict and they sympathize with the sentence that has been uh, given to him not knowing how did the magistrate right. arrive at the two years mm -hmm. and why not the three maximum years mm -hmm. and why not the one maximum year for the second count they do not want to see um, what happened before. Mm. and what happened before that. Mm. The boy went on, even when the magistrate asked, do you still love her? The boy, instead of saying, well, and I've come to this, I loved her, but now that it is not possible, maybe I'm like, yes. Mm. So this strength mm. that even goes beyond the court mm. is like impunity. Not recognizing even the power of the court. Exactly. But also, you say something, well, just to close, is the fact that you say it didn't matter if you lose a vote because a lot of people say she's never gonna come back, especially your first time in parliament. You know, who are you represent the woman? 
majorly, I represent the entire district, men and women, but majorly I am uh, at, at, the, at the lead, I'm leading women. So if I do not lead, lead, lead by example and come out and say something is affecting me, how am I going to protect others? So there are people who have come out saying, uh, Sylvia, we are going to meet her 2021, she will not go back, that is her only term. I don't care if that is my only term. But what I am fighting for or is not, it is something that is going to live beyond. It is a world that I want to see my daughters living in and my son. It is a world where I want to see every woman happy and free to express herself and say no to a man and the man should be able to take the no. If I've given you the no, take it as a no. If I've given you a yes, come. If I say now the yes has now been uh, repealed, I cannot continue with you, you should be able to accept that I can also end a relationship. So these are some of the things that people kind of use to keep us in fear. So if I just keep myself tagged to what the outcome of the vote in 2021 will be, that means I'll not be able to do anything. I only do with an interest. I don't want to do that with an interest. I want to live a normal life. If I go back and people think I have done well, they vote for me. If they do not vote for me, I am ready. I will continue working with the women. Now I've even met more people than I knew before. I've met you. I've met many other women activists. I've even met men who know that I am a principal person. If I am saying this, this is what I say. And I stick to it. So this, um, honestly, uh, does not matter if I am going to 2021 or not. What if someone killed me before 2021? They would vote for another person actually one or two months after. Before 60 days uh, uh, elapsed, they would vote for another person. So for me to come out and protect my life from a person who could potentially harm me is for me a plus. Once I am safe in this country, I don't mind all other things. But it does not mean that I don't want to continue leading. If they think they need a person who will hide in times of danger, who will not be able to protect herself, then it is the same person who will not be able even to protect herself. It has brought us up to uh, trivialize issues of harassment and violence against women. They uh, actually teach us that like, like in my language, they say Like if you are married, you only have to pretend you're stupid in order for you to be there. Meaning if someone beats you up and uh, harasses you or is violent, you're in a violent relationship, you're not supposed to come out. When you come out, you're wrong. So society and our culture has conditioned us to take things in a trivial manner, which are actually very serious. So the backlash, I also kind of expected it. Although I didn't know it would be this much, uh, it took me by surprise too. Uh, uh, I kind of expected, because that is why I remained in fear, mm. not knowing what, how they would judge me mm. being an MP. But again, I ask people, mm. supposing um, uh, people in Uganda heard that I was dating this boy, mm. how would they have taken it? Mm. Still the, cu the cultural um, uh, norms and attitudes would have come in. Mm. He is a woman, she's spoiling her children, that mm. kind of thing, you know this boy again will be now called a young person. But a 25 year old who can consent mm -hmm. if you, you are in agreement. Mm -hmm. I am not uh, really saying that you know, people should do not date actually across maybe the ages we have seen young girls dating very old men and young women are dating uh, boys who are younger than them. That is not the issue. Mm -hmm. The issue is when it goes beyond and interferes with my privacy and my peace and becomes a threat to my life and uh, confines me in a way that I cannot do things freely, then it has gone beyond. I do not say that, uh, or I do not blame that men shouldn't talk to women. Actually, that's what men say. Is she a nun? Is, uh, is, uh, is she a virgin? All the things. I am not a virgin. I am a woman. I have feelings. I, I crave for love. But this was not love that I really craved for. And women should actually come out of this conditioning that uh, issues of harassment, sexual harassment, are trivial matters and that we should laugh at them. They have done it today. But just as I said, our children tomorrow will live in a better world. Okay. Really, thank you so much for tuning in. We really admire your bravery. It's not just for yourself. I'm sure that you are doing this not for yourself, but for women of this country, for your own children, your daughters, and you would want to see them living a violent, free life. And we are here, we are many Ugandans behind you, and it's important that you're, you are not a victim, you are a very 
successful, you have gone through many, you know, actually it's society which yes, has victimized you. To, to victimize you. And it's important that your strong voice continues to even grow stronger. Thank you so much. Yeah.